guys in this video I'm going to unbox the brand new cup of mocha from Wakako. Now yesterday I shot an unboxing video and a look at the components but I didn't put any audio to it because there was just too much noise in the house so I'm going to try and narrate over it a bit like a Morgan drinks coffee and what I've done is I've put it on my phone so I can watch it back and I can try and freestyle there's no script guys you know See that fancy spin I did of it? Happy with that. Got a user manual inside the box, nice and thick. There's a warranty card. It's well packaged. If you're ordering it from Wakako, it's going to come from Hong Kong, I think. So you want it to be in a decent box, and they always do a great job with the box. I'm waffling too much. <laughs> God knows how I'm going to keep up. Right, let's talk about the lid. The lid on this is bang on, perfect. Absolutely no complaints at all. Totally not going to leak on you. It's brilliant. On that last video I did for the Pippa Mocker, I showed you a little snippet of uh, James Hoffman's video where he shows just how many mugs actually leak. This is very good. Look. It's not going nowhere. I tested it last night. I really shook it bone dry now this is actually a really cool addition to this product that nipply area there it captures all of the drips from the filter so that just drops neatly inside the dripper and the lid is just like a push fit in the top it's so well designed all, all Wakako products are so well designed and this one is probably the best so far underneath uh, the dripper when you first get it you get 10 filter papers which isn't very much is it but um, you can use these 60s and that, I'm not even going to use these. They might be perfectly fine, but I make V60 pour overs every morning. I've got the papers I like. My local coffee shop sells them in a stack of 100, so that's good news for me. You get a scoop, pulls. Now, this scoop, it says on the manual, put two and a half scoops worth of coffee in. It's a bit strange to have a, a measurement of two and a half. Like, why not just have it at the scoop a little bit bigger and just have two scoops? But I don't use scoops, I never have. But when I'm at home, I weigh my beans on the scales. And when I'm out in the woods, I can eyeball it. If I'm using the crush grind, I know exactly how much I need to put in the hopper in order to get 20 grams or 18 grams, whatever I choose to use. Okay, so the flask is top notch. The underside's got a little non-slip rubber bit on it. I lost mine on the Pippa Mocker, it came off, but then again, I've really put that through the ring. I've dropped it about four times. It's got a dent on it and stuff, but it still works good. Yeah, last night I tested the, how well it keep the water hot. And uh, after two and a half hours, I took a sip and it burnt my lip. Three hours it took to reach a drinkable temperature. You don't really want to drink a good coffee any hotter than 140 Fahrenheit. The heat overtakes the flavours. Right, let's look at the dripper. You twist it and it clicks into place so it's not going to drop down. Now this thing is the bee's knees. The dripper goes on top, screws down, turn it to raise it, get one of your paper filters, add your coffee and away you go. Uh, and then once you're done, you take the uh, you take the dripper off, and you replace it with the uh, lid. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to put that over the footage or not, but I tried, didn't I? Now today I was going to go out to the woods with it, uh, but this morning when I woke up, I thought. I just need a coffee and then I thought well I've got all my camera equipment out the kids are still asleep I may as well f film myself making a coffee so that's what I did so this is a demonstration in the kitchen environment uh, and then just a bit of waffle in the garden so guys if you've never done a pour over before there is a learning curve involved and if you don't have a set of scales to measure it, it can be a little bit hit and miss. So if you're new to the world of pour overs, then I highly recommend you check out some videos. James Hoffman's got a brilliant video on the V60 and it's basically exactly the same. If you used uh, James Hoffman's V60 method on the cup of mocha, it will work just as good.
So when you're doing a pour over, the first thing you do is the blooming phase. And basically, whatever the weight of coffee in the dripper is, you want to double it. Um, so if you're using 20 grams, you want to bloom with at least 40 grams of water. Uh, if you don't have a set of scales, obviously that's a little bit um, troublesome, but you can sort of eyeball it. Uh, the blooming phase should last at least 30 seconds. I bloom for about 45 seconds. After that, you start steadily pouring in the coffee. Uh, and you don't want to go too crazy because you don't want to disturb the bed. And that's one of the reasons why it's good to have a gooseneck kettle. If you haven't, you can still make a decent enough pour over coffee, but really you need that control. There's a lot of technical aspects that you can do. I won't go over that in this video because I don't want to make it too long and bore you every coffee is different you'll find a sweet spot usually that's around two and a half minutes for me so you want the brew time to be around two and a half minutes for a 300 gram drink and once you're there taste it if, it, if you think it's a little bit under extracted change your grind you adjust it until you get your timing right if you've never done a pour over give it a try you don't have to have a gooseneck kettle and a set of digital scales with a timer on it. You can sort of wing it, but if you want to get really good results, I highly recommend that you um, get those as well. The Pippa Mocha has got exactly the same diameter mug. And if you remember from my previous video, um, I said about not having the drinking spout on the Pippa Mocha, and some people might, you know, not like that that you have to remove the lid well you don't on this and if you wanted to you could put this lid on the pippa mocha and you could put pippa mocha's lid on this if you was really concerned about um spilling it if you was carrying carrying it in your bag or your handbag or whatever not that i've got a handbag so if you've got the pippa mocha you want one of these lids on it get yourself a cup of mocha chop and change it's like 27 quid on Wakako's website. I think that is cheap as chips. I'd probably pay twice for it, to be honest. I keep saying mocha. I think it's mocha. But it's not as bad as saying espresso instead of espresso. That is the uh, fundamental law in the coffee world. Never say espresso. What I love about this is... I've been mucking around with the camera, playing with backs this morning, and um, it's probably about 25 minutes since I made it, maybe even longer, and this is still the perfect drinking temperature. I think once I'd fully extracted the coffee into the cup, it was around 165. Not that you're gonna walk around with a thermometer, but you can get the idea from that. This is perfect drink temperature, and it's about half an hour later. When I've been out hiking in the past and I've decided to do pour overs while I've been away gee you just can't keep the temperature on a cold morning by the time you've spent three minutes passing it through the dripper into the pot especially if the pot's not insulated your your, your temperature is so low before you've even took your first sip the beauty of the pour over is you really get those distinctive flavors so if you're the sort of person that likes a dark roast and pour over might not be for you, but if you like a medium or even a light roast and you really want to f taste those subtle flavours, then I, I really don't think you can go wrong with a pour over. If you guys like this video, I'll do a follow up video in the woods with Baxter, you know, boiling some water and doing it, you know, where it should be done, out in nature. If you enjoyed the video, uh, leave it a like. If you like the look of the product, there'll be links in the description below. So click those links and um, it'll take you to where you need to go and uh, as always guys thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon Do you know I love drinking uh, coffee outdoors even if it's just in the garden it's just so, so nice to just sit down in the morning watch the sunrise listen to the birds in the trees it's brilliant Bax loves it too don't you Bax <laughs>